thing. So I got a little bit uh, lazy and decided to not create the UV map and just paint the colors directly into the vertices instead. Now midway through the process, I realized that the vertex color sets cannot be named color. If you name it color, it will not work, so just name it something like skin color instead of just color. And the color picker is next to useless in vertex painting mode because it picked the shaded color of the screen instead of the actual color of the surface. So you can see I created a color palette to pick the color instead of using the color picker. Initially, I painted just two color sets, the skin color and the roughness. Later I will paint the specular and the subsurface sets. Now the color and the roughness are done, it is time to hook them up in the material so that we can see the preview of what we are doing. But switching to cycles, I realized that the iron materials are not working very well, so I fixed them before making the skin material. For the skin material, I try to use the principal shader but it doesn't work very well so I recreated the skin shader that I usually use in commission work. It is actually very simple, a diffuse mixed with a subsurface and then mixed with a glossy shader and that's it. And then it is just the matter of connecting the vertex colors that I painted. Now that I have the preview, I realized that the ears are too thick, the light cannot penetrate through, so I needed to make them thinner so that when the light is shining from the back, the ears should glow red. I don't remember what went over me that made me go in and tweak the rest of the face, but uh, this tweak does not mean anything, the real tweak is in another video. Now, this is the part where I tweak the ears. Next is the lashes and the brows. Separate pieces of the eyelids and the forehead. Bind them to the base mesh using the surface deform modifier. And then paint the vertex group to use as the density for the hairs. The 
eyelashes are simple, just place some guides, make sure they are evenly distributed, comb them into their proper place. And then, add some children hair. Set the clump all the way to 1, and use a very small noise texture to randomize the length as well as the clumping of the hairs. As I was about to create the brows, I realized that I forgot to scale the model up. The surface deform modifier is very bad at small scale. You can see that there is an error right there, a small dent in the mesh. So as a rule of thumb, I always make the model 10 times bigger than the real world size. For example, if the model is 1.6 meters high, then make it 16 meters. So I scaled up the model and applied the scale transformation. However, after applying the scale transform, the lashes are messed up. So I had to recreate the lashes as well. Brows is a bit more tricky. First, subdivide the mesh three times and apply the modifier, and then paint the density vertex group onto the subdivided mesh. Create a bunch of evenly distributed guides roughly around the area where you painted the weight. You don't have to be very precise. Comp the guide in place and then add the children. Make sure the clump is set to zero and use the painted weight as the density.
have a nice brows. However, I realized that the brows are too high and uh, this is because I separated a very high section of the forehead. So I deleted the brows and separated a lower piece of the forehead to recreate the brows. The browse is now done and so is the video. I'll see you again in the next one.